Good morning, Advanced Chemistry, and happy Tuesday. I want to thank you guys for being so patient with me the last, well, several weeks as things have been pretty crazy and you probably felt like I've abandoned you and especially yesterday when I was out sick after Friday being out and, and now today I'm out for smarter balance testing and all I can say is I'm sorry and I appreciate you understanding and I I truly hope to be back to normal um, starting tomorrow. So today what we're going to do is um, begin some notes on what's known as salt hydrolysis. And this is still, just in case you're wondering, this is still 4.5, just after titrations. This goes along with titrations. Um, salt hydrolysis, um, and I've kind of just put the simple definition here, is when salt, a salt of some kind, is going to react with water. And remember, when you make a salt in a neutralization reaction, like a titration, and in doing so, we're going to make a salt that um, may dissociate and react with that water. So I'm going to add that to you. So after neutralization reaction, some salts will dissociate and react with that water. And by doing so, that's going to affect the pH of the solution. So may affect... It's really awful handwriting. It may affect the pH of the solution. And in fact, in yours, um, in one of your titrations, you absolutely had that going on, and that was the acetic acid example. So your acetic acid reacted with sodium hydroxide, your standard. And you made sodium acetate as your salt. And that salt right there has the characteristics to react with water to make that solution basic. And I know that right now, but you don't. Um, I'm going to teach you how you can tell that by looking at the formula of that salt. But because that um, salt is the way it is, it went ahead and reacted with the water to make that solution basic. So remember how in titration we were talking about how an endpoint might not always be neutral. And we said, wait a second, that doesn't really make a whole lot of sense because you know, you should be adding exactly the same amount of OH- minus through your standard as H3O plus you have in your unknown. And it's not because of either one of those things, it's because of the salt that you're making, that your endpoint may be a pH that's different than 7.0. And in fact, this was the case when you did your acetic acid, is that your endpoint was actually up in the 8-something range because you had this um, salt that was messing with the water. So I'm going to show you today how you can figure that out. Um, and we can even predict some pHs based on a salt. So here we go. Some steps for you to follow. You already wrote that. Um, I'm just going to have you write the steps. Actually, let's do this. Let's do, um, let's use NH4Cl, ammonium chloride, as a salt example. And then we'll do the steps one at a time with this example. Now I want to warn you guys too that um, this may not make sense the first one or two or even three times around. So you just got to be patient and kind of stick with it and it'll come to you. It's not always the easiest thing to pick up on the first time around. So just trust me on that and be patient. So number one says find the parent acid and parent base. Now remember that when you make a salt you got an acid plus a base. We call those the parent acid and the parent base and that makes your salt plus water. So in other words, we want to know if NH4Cl is my salt, where did it come from? What acid did it come from and what base did it come from? Now remember that the acid goes with the anion and the base goes with the cation. So in this case, NH4Cl, that came from the acid HCl. 
So HCl donates an H, it's going to become Cl minus 1. So it might even be beneficial to write it that way. So instead of NH4Cl, remember that's a salt that's going to dissociate. They all are. They're all going to be water soluble. So it's going to be NH4 plus 1 and Cl minus 1. And so that means your base, if it picks up a hydrogen plus 1, your base was NH3. So if those two reacted together, that's how I end up with the salt NH4 plus, and excuse me, NH4Cl. So now we look at number two. The strength of the conjugate acid or base is opposite of the parent acid or base. So we want to look at the acid or base to see if it's strong because then the conjugate acid or base is going to be the opposite. So for example, HCl is a strong acid. So it is going to completely become, when it reacts with water, excuse me, 100% H3O plus 1 and Cl minus 1. So Cl minus 1, there's no equilibrium, there's no, um, this is remember, conjugate base, there's no um, way that Cl minus 1 is going to act like a base and go backwards because the arrow is only pointing in one direction. So Cl minus 1 is, is not really even a conjugate base. It's impossible for it to act like a conjugate base, even though we label it that way. So when the acid is strong, the conjugate base is really weak or really nil. But if I look at ammonia... If I have NH3, which I know is weak, reacting with water, then that's going to become NH4 plus 1 and OH minus 1. And here's my conjugate acid. But because this is weak, this has an equilibrium going on. So just as likely for NH3 to react as a as a base and go this way, NH4 is just as likely to act as an acid and go this way. So, if that's the case, if we can see that the parent is weak, then we know that this is going to react as an acid. Now, if NH4 plus 1 is going to act as an acid with water, then we know we're going to get H3O plus and NH3 in solution, which means with all the titration and going and everything going on, that's all well and good. But with NH4 plus 1 in the water, we're going to get a spike in H3O plus that we wouldn't have if it wasn't there. So, now we're going to see how this works in some other examples. Okay, KCl. Remember, first you want to find your parent acid and parent base. So KCl came from, the Cl part came from HCl, which was strong. So that means Cl minus 1 isn't going to do anything. And K came from KOH, which is also a strong. So that means that K plus 1 does nothing as an acid. So if neither one of them messes with water at all, then this resulting solution is going to have a neutral pH. Okay, let's do another one. NH4 and HCO3. Now HCO3, remember, that came from the acid H2CO3. That's carbonic acid which is a weak acid, which means that HCO3, I'm going to circle it because as a base, it is going to act 
because remember, you don't have to write this down, but if this is a weak acid, H2CO3, and it's reacting with water, it's got a double-sided arrow, meaning that its conjugate base, HCO3-1, is just as likely to act as a base and pick up a hydrogen as that H2, H2CO3 is likely to act as an acid and donate one. NH4 comes from NH3, which is a weak base. And so NH4, as we saw before, is likely to act as an acid. Well, if they're both going to act as an acid or a base at the same time, then the resulting pH of they're both acting as, a, as an acid and a base, one for one, then the resulting pH is going to be neutral. Let's look at another one. LiC2H3O2. Let's look at where they came from. Lithium, Li plus 1, came from the base LiOH, which is an alkali metal hydroxide. So this is going to be a strong base. And if this is a strong base, lithium is not likely to act as an acid, the lithium ion. Okay, this one we've actually seen, HC2H3O2, which is weak. It's a weak acid. So that means that this is likely to act as a base. And since it has nothing to counteract it, base is the only thing that we see, so the resulting solution would be basic. And I don't know why I went from example 4 to example 2. Okay, we did that one already, so let me make up another one for you. Oops. Okay, how about you try... NH4... And why don't we do NH4 and, why am I having such a hard time here, NO3. You try that one and see what you get. I'm going to pause this and you do the same and see what you come up with. Okay, here's what I got. NH4 comes from NH3, which is a weak base. So since it's weak, that means it's conjugate acid, NH4 is likely to act. NO3 minus 1 comes from HNO3, a strong acid, which means its conjugate base is not going to do anything, and so therefore the solution should end up acidic. Alright, so now let's go one step farther. If you know the molarity of the salt, you can actually use Ka and Kb to calculate the resulting pH, like a number. So here's our three steps. Determine if the pH will be acidic, basic, or neutral, like we've been doing, just so you kind of get a heads up. Two, we're going to use Kw to find Ka or Kb of the ion, whether it's a conjugate acid or conjugate base. And then three, we're going to plug in the values to the Ka or Kb expression, and then we can get a number value. So here we go. What is the pH of a 0.1 molar solution of NH4Cl? So step one is to predict um, whether it should be acidic, basic, or neutral. So NH4Cl, remember NH4 comes from NH3, which is a weak base. So we know NH4 is going to go and act as an acid. Cl comes from HCl which is a strong acid, so Cl minus 1 is not likely to act as a conjugate base. So therefore our solution should be somewhat acidic. So there's step 1. Step 2, we're going to use Kw to find the, the Ka of NH4. 
So, okay. If NH4 is the acid we're after, we're probably not going to find it on a table somewhere. Or you might. I don't know if it's on your table or not. But I know we would find the KB of NH3. So, the KA and the KB of its conjugate base are related by KW equals KA times KB which I'm not going to get into why that's true right now, we can do that some time later or you may have already, but if you multiply the um, acid dissociation constant by the conjugate base or vice versa, it can totally be vice versa, it can be KB times its conjugate acid because that's actually what we're going to need in this case then you get KW. So if I do that, um, NH3 is very common, so I should be able to find that on a table somewhere. So I'm going to have 1.0 times 10 to the negative 14th equals, I want the KA of NH4 plus 1, and then I just need to plug in the KB of my ammonia, which if I look that up, that is 1.8 times 10 to the negative 5th. So if I solve for KA, I'm going to get something like 5.6 times 10 to the negative 10th. So make no mistake, NH4 plus 1 is not a strong acid, but it does have a Ka, which means it is going to affect um, the pH of the solution to a certain extent. So now I can kind of clean all this mess up, and um, I can plug in step 3 my Ka expression for NH4 plus 1, which I'm going to go ahead and write how NH4 plus 1 acts as an acid. And I'm running out of space here, so I'm actually going to clear all this out and try again. Um, whoops. So if I have NH4 acting as an acid plus one then it's going to donate a hydrogen to get H3O plus and its conjugate base is going to be NH3 and so if I set up a Ka for this I would want H3O plus times NH3 and that would all be divided by NH4 plus one so now I just have to plug in what I know. I know this whole thing is equal to 5.6 times 10 to the negative 10th. And I know that the concentration of NH4 plus 1 is going to be the same as what it is here in the salt. So I know that's going to be 0 0.1. What I don't know is H3O, what that's going to be. So I'm just going to plug in X. And when I solve for that, that's going to help because I can get the pH from that too. I also know that for every 1 h for every 1 H3O plus that I make, I'm going to make 1 NH3, so I can do a 1 for 1, x times x. So knowing all of that information now, I essentially have x squared over 0.1 equals 5.6 times 10 to the negative 10th. And when I do all that, I can solve for x. I get 7.48 times 10 to the negative 6th. And remember, that's the concentration of H3O plus 1. And so that's the key to finding pH. So if I take that number, I'm going to clear this out again, and I do, whoops, and I do the negative log of that number, negative log of 7.48 times 10 to the negative 6, I get 5.13 as my pH, which is slightly acidic, and so that's what I was expecting, and so that makes sense. So I've thrown a lot of information at you today, and I just kind of wanted you to kind of absorb it and write it down. Now I'm going to have you guys try some practice problems that we will continue into tomorrow when I'm here to 
assist you on those. So do your best to try them and see how far you get. And then, like I said, we'll we'll wade through them a little bit more tomorrow and we can talk about any questions you have um, uh, regarding the lab. So thank you. Have a wonderful day. And I hope to see you very soon. Take care.